If you guys want some coins for the new Foot Fantasy promo, please check out MMOXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're very fast, they're very cheap, they're very reliable, and if you use my code REMET, you can get yourself 5% off your order. This supports the channel greatly. So what's up guys, my name's Ash and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video guys, I've got some updated custom tactics and player instructions for one of the best defensive and most balanced formations in FIFA 23. This is the 4-4-2. Now the 4-4-2 is honestly the best formation when you're struggling and nothing else is working is because it's the most bare bones formation. It's the most basic you can get and sometimes basic is what you need to get back on track. But just before we get into today's video guys, I'd very much appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up as that does really help the YouTube search. Also subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one and don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside guys, let's get right into today's video. Now starting off with the custom tactics guys, for the defensive style I like to have this on balance. This is because it gives you the greatest control over your defense where you're able to press when you need to press and you're able to drop off and be more conservative when you need to be. So it does give you the greater control compared to other tactics that you can use like the pressure tactics. So I do suggest using balance. Now moving on to the defensive width, I currently have this on 46. This is so we can primarily defend those central areas as it is important to block off the central areas of the pitch primarily but at the same time we still have that natural bit of coverage of the wings so when somebody does try and make a wide play against us we are able to cover those areas so we primarily defend it in a narrow way but we also have the natural width to cover the wings now moving on to the depth guys I like to have this on 57 the reason for this is the defensive line isn't too deep to the point where we're always getting pinned back but at the same time the defensive line isn't too high to the point where we're always getting through balled so it can be very difficult for your opponent to know what to do because your defensive line isn't always high enough to be through balled and it's not always like deep enough so they can pin you back if you get what I mean so it's a nice balance and I do really enjoy it. Now moving on to build up play guys, I like to have this on balance, this is because it is suited for all the different types of FIFA 23 gameplay in my experience, as you guys know the gameplay in this game is very inconsistent, sometimes it can be fast, sometimes it can be slow, it can be laggy, it can be fast but laggy, there's so many different types of gameplay, so it's important to have this on balance so you're suited up for all the different types of gameplay you might experience. Now moving on to chance creation guys, you have two options you can use really, I suggest using direct passing because it means means your players will make those runs they will have the good movement that you want to create the chances if you look at the diagram in the bottom right you can see the white dots which are your attackers they constantly move around in that dynamic motion to break through the defensive line they also do this thing where they will bunch up against the defender so it's very easy to do those isolation plays which is very important in FIFA 23 now if you don't like direct passing and you would class yourself as a lesser skilled player maybe forward runs might be the better option for you because it pushes your player a little bit further into your opponent's box uh, but this comes at a cost of maybe being counter-attacked and if you are a better player you might find direct passing better anyway so this is a bit of a preference uh, but you can try either of them I do suggest direct passing though moving on to the width guys for the attack I like to have this on 58 this is because the 442 is obviously a wider formation so it makes sense that we want to have a higher width so we have this higher width so our left mid and right mid aren't coming too narrow but at the same time we don't want it too wide to the point where our team feels too disconnected from everybody so 58 has been a good balance for me now moving on to the players in box guys I have this on six so we can get some players into the box to create chances but at the same time we don't overcommit our entire team to the point where we do get counter-attacked so I found a good balance in having this on six as for corners and free kicks I have these both on one because there is a corner kick routine that I use and if you guys want to check it out there is a link to it in the top right hand corner of the screen but that is why we have these both on one now for the players you want to use guys in the two striker positions I suggest going for a bit of a balance between the two where you have one more finisher striker and then you have a more creative striker next to him. This is so you can have like the creative finisher dynamic and it does help to make this formation a little bit more unpredictable because if you just have two out and out finishers up top you might find it difficult to actually create those chances as your strikers aren't technical enough to orchestrate more attacks uh, and other options. So it's nice to have a bit of a balance but that being said you guys can do whatever you want to do. 
two. Now for the left mid and the right mid, you're actually going to want to go for like winger style players. You don't have to worry about this player's defensive stats. It's not too important at all. Uh, just go for like a really good winger style player like a Jairzinho, a Di Maria. Uh, I'm just using Chiesa and Di Maria. So don't worry about their like defensive stats. Just go for somebody that is quick, maybe has the skills, are able to dribble, cross shoot. Basically a really good attacking, quick, agile player in these positions. Now for the two centre mids, I suggest going for one more defensive midfielder and then a more box to box midfielder. We do this so we have a balance between the two with the defensive play you kind of want like a medium high work rate so they're more focused on defending because they're going to stay back and add defensive support and then for the box to box play you're going to want somebody with well rounded stats and if you can get it a high high work rate so you get the maximum contribution in attack and defense that being said this popper is a high medium but the work rate doesn't matter too much it's just something you should aim for but just make sure you're going for the right kind of players in these positions now for the two fullbacks I like to go for a bit of a balance between the two where my left back is a bit more technical he's got a bit more attacking ability is able to play out the back a bit better and then our right back is a bit more defensively solid uh, so I like to have that balance so there's a bit of like a dynamic between the two fullbacks where one's better in attack and the other's a bit better in defense so we have that balance there now for the center backs and the goalkeeper these just need to be as meta as you can get them there's not really too much to say there to be honest with you now moving on to player instructions guys on the two strikers I have them both on stay central and come back on defense we have them on stay central because we don't need them drifting off to the wide areas we've already got the right mid and left mid so we need these players to stay in the central areas so they're always where a striker should be uh, it's a very important instruction in my opinion now a lot of people like to put these players on getting behind but I really don't like that the reason for this is I think mixed attack makes the build up play a little bit easier and a bit more fluid if you have them both on getting behind uh, they always make these runs where they're very disconnected from the rest of the team and if you're playing against a very good player getting behind is a little bit too predictable because they can just mark those runs all the time which means it'll be very difficult for you to create any attacks at all so I like to have them both on mixed attacks so they get a bit more involved in the build-up that being said if you want to put your more finisher striker the more clinical striker on getting behind that's completely fine but mixed attack is the way to go for me we also have both strikers on comeback on defense now this isn't necessarily a defensive move but it's to assist us in the attack more than anything the reason for this is when we lose the ball if we have them on basic defensive support they will sit very far away from the rest of the team which means when you win the ball back your strikers are almost like disconnected from everybody so by putting them on comeback on defense when you lose the ball they get closer to the rest of the team so when we inevitably win it back they get involved in the build-up and we have more passing options to get up the pitch so it does really help with the build-up now moving on to the left mid and the right mid we have come back on defense get in behind and get into the box across come back on defense again not really too much of a defensive move it just means your players are in more natural positions when we win the ball back and when we are defending they sit in a little bit of a better position now the, the reason we don't want basic defensive support is because if you have a player that doesn't have a perfect work rate for example like this Kies is a high medium so his defensive work rate isn't great um, if we have him on basic defensive support when we lose the ball he'll kind of be a bit of a passenger he'll be a bit of a spectator and he won't really fill in the position that he's meant to so by having them both on comeback and defense it ensures that they take up the correct position when we are defending now we have them on getting behind because this means they will make those runs to really get down the wing if you don't have this on sometimes the left mid and right mid will be a little bit too static so it's important that we have them on getting behind so they really are looking to make those penetrating runs we have them on getting to the box for cross because when we do get near the penalty box if we have them on balance crossing runs they will kind of just sit there like a spectator so it's important to put them on getting to the box for cross because that way they will make those transitioning runs into the penalty area to get more involved doesn't mean you have to cross the ball to them it just means they're going to make those runs to get involved in the attack now for the left center mid the more defensive midfielder we just have stay back while attacking and cover center this is very self-explanatory but we have stay back while attacking because we don't really need this player to go forward he's the more defensive player so we want him to stay back and we have him on cover center so he is covering those central areas we don't need him to cover the wings as we've already got two players on this side Di Maria and Roberto Carlos we need him to cover the central areas because there is nobody there to do that now for the more box to box midfielder we have default settings and cover center again we have default settings because we don't want to restrict this player sometimes we want him to attack and defend we want him to have a bit of a freer role in that right center mid spot and we have him on cover center again because we don't want him to cover the wings we need 
him to cover those central areas. Now for both fullbacks, I have them both on stay back while attacking and overlap. Now the reason we have them both on stay back is because the 4-4-2 is already a wide formation. Now I mainly use my fullbacks going forward in those more narrow formations where it's important to get that wider option at times. So for example, the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow, uh, it's a very narrow minded attack and we need to rely on the fullbacks to add that extra width. With the 4-4-2, we've already got the left mid and the right mid to add the width, so we don't really need these fullbacks to go forward. So by having them both on stay back, it means we're a bit more defensively solid. We have the overlap instruction on because let's say we do trigger a run forward, it means they're going to add extra width and uh, help us even more in that regard. But stay back while default is probably the best. Now, uh, for the centre backs and the goalkeeper, we just leave them alone because there is not really any point in changing them. But yeah, guys, in my custom tactics and the player instructions for the 4 4 2, if you guys have enjoyed or found this useful, I'd very much appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, so you never miss out on any videos like this one. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside, guys, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.